Jalisa and his family. Jalisa. This is a big challenge for Isa, as large crowds are a frightening prospect. But his dad is hoping the chance to see the Ahmadi religious leader, the Khalifa or Hazur, in the flesh will help him overcome his fear. Uh, yeah, I think this is where we split. Just like the mosque, the Jalsa site observes Islamic law and separates the adults into male and female sections. So if Isa wants to catch sight of the Khalifa, he has to brave the crowds with just his dad and his little sister by his side. We're going into the main marquee now to send Mars, okay? Over the next three days, Isa and his family will be joined on site by the entire British Ahmadi community, plus another 10,000 international visitors. The festival starts in the same way every year, with the Khalifa raising the Union Jack alongside the Ahmadi flag as a public symbol of loyalty to the UK. I think any, anybody who lives in a country long enough should be used to their cultures and start adapting them to, to their way of life without compromising on their religious uh, requirements. It's our nation, it's where we live, and loyalty is very much part of the Islamic faith. I'd say there's more Islam in, in Britain as a country than in most Muslim countries around the world. Helping the aged, pensions, and welfare state, and a free NHS. These are Islamic principles. We have we have absolutely no problem, no problem in being British and being feeling very British, and uh, and being Muslim. Attending the Jalsa may be food for the soul, but the thousands of delegates also need to eat. The man responsible for catering for all of the visitors over the three-day event and heading up a team of over a hundred volunteer cooks is head chef Rafi Shah. So it's working fine now, yeah? Okay, that's good. This year's gathering is the biggest ever. Today we are cooking 110 pounds. Uh, this could sort of feed uh, about uh, 25 to 27,000 people. Hopefully. And even normally calm Ruffy, an old hand at mass catering for the mosque, is struggling with the vast amounts of food that needs to be prepared in one go. Did you count how many delegates we got? Huh? How many? Yeah, Sakebe is also my assistant. He's been with me for over 30 years. Why are you guys sitting for three hours? Three hours sleep. Hopefully I'll catch that up, you know, catch up that later on this week sometime. Haven't you got anything else to do? When you've got the responsibility, you know, that you've got to do things, then you forget about, you know, the lack of sleep and all that. <laughs> Amir, why are you looking worried? Rafi and his team are seriously behind. To meet their lunchtime deadline in just three hours' time, 20 tons of onions must be sliced and 30 tons of potatoes chopped. And now, a crucial ingredient has added to the delay. We had the butchers working all night to get some more meat, which just arrived this morning. Is that 75 left, including these? No, not, no, no, it's left, it's five plus minus five. And we've got to give you food at one o'clock uh, for 30,000. So that's why the pressure is on a little bit. Cook them at full power now. We haven't got time, so we've got to hurry up. But away from the frantic kitchens, some areas of the Jalsa are very quiet, perhaps too quiet, for the love professors of the marriage bureau. I, I don't think we had many, but maybe around 10, but all of activity happens that end. Very quiet here, so obviously they're enjoying it. This is the only tent at the Jalsa to deal with both men and women. But just like the rest of the festival, the genders are still separated. There's a curtain which runs between the men's side and the women's side. So this curtain is all the way along. And this is our Ahmadiyya tradition, you know, men and women don't mix. They are there and we are here. 
The three love professors were hoping this year's biggest ever jalsa would be a bumper one for marriage matches. Well, they're all, all, all interested in there. <laughs> we, oh, we are men's side, obviously, they're quiet. Yes. <laughs> in our culture, it's mostly ladies who organize these kind of things. Okay. But all is not lost on the love front. The men might be more reticent, but the women's side is buzzing. You can see there's a lot of noise. What's going on? There are nearly 150 mothers and perhaps their daughters with them. And we have got all the lists with us of the boys. And they are going through that, having a discussion and that sort of thing. So they are trying to find out the best match for that side. Um, okay. 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 After three days of praying, eating, matchmaking, and catching up with friends and family from across the globe, everyone comes together for the final and most important ceremony of the Jalsa, the International Bed. A pledge of allegiance to faith and country, led by the Khalifa. The chance of finally getting close to the Khalifa is the incentive six-year-old Isa needs to brave the crowds and join in. He's prone to sound a lot. Um, he doesn't like loud noises too much. So he's getting better. The Khalifa sits at the front of the crowd, surrounded by the most senior people. From here, all 40,000 Emadis present are connected hand to shoulder, all the way to the back of the tent, and even out into the field outside. As you saw, the bath just happened, the international pledge, uh, where all the Emadis around the world can renew their faith and you renew their pledge to the, to the Hazur. It was brilliant. I mean, we, we were there. Um, obviously, we were pushed towards the back area. But not everyone was entirely happy with the final ceremony. I'm really scared. You were scared? Yeah. Because a lot of people there, weren't there? Yeah. And it was really loud. Yeah. But you get used to it. We'll do it again next year, okay? We'll do more practice for next year. I think this is the first international bet that Isa has actually partaken in properly. And uh, I'm hoping he'll remember it. The Pledge of Allegiance is hungry work. As around 40,000 Emadis head for their final meal of the Jalsa, behind the scenes in the kitchen, Ruffy and his team of volunteers have made their deadline by the skin of their teeth. I've done this job for about 15 years. Every year I come here, I tell my people at my work about this job and they say, really, you do it voluntarily? It's not like work. It's a totally different feeling. You can't explain it. You have to live it. I would say nearly 200,000 meals. This is a record, but it keeps, every year, it just keeps increasing. This one feels really yummy. And uh, the, the figures keep going up. After 72 hours of almost non-stop cooking, Ruffy can finally catch up on lost sleep. But there's no time to relax for the man behind the whole event. You won't know whether it's a complete success until everybody's gone home. It's it's absolutely absolutely fantastic. I hope you enjoy your day. And such joy on people's faces. By the time you wound this dance out properly, you know, we got all the bills and paid all the checks, you're probably ready to start organising the next one, aren't we?